Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about an unusual type of a supernova that occurs when a neutron star collides with a white dwarf. Let's discuss the science behind this and let's actually talk about the significance of this event as well. Welcome to What The Math. So this unusual supernova you see in front of you is actually a randomly generated and it does kind of look a little bit different from usual, but that's because um, because of the random number generator. It just turned out to be red. And it's actually kind of cool because we want to create an unusual supernova. Today we're going to talk about the idea of a colliding neutron star uh, with a colliding white dwarf. In other words, a binary system where a white dwarf collides with a neutron star. Let's just simulate this first by uh, placing one of the most famous uh, pulsars or neutron stars known as Crab Pulsar and placing one of the most famous uh, white dwarfs, Sirius B. Uh, this is the closest one to us and I believe it is somewhere over here unless I missed it. And here it is. And you can see that uh, the white dwarf is significantly larger than Crab Pulsar. But the reality is that the mass of Crab Pulsar is actually higher than the mass of the White Dwarf. Now, interestingly, um, we don't really know of any systems that, that do have um, a binary White Dwarf. Now, interestingly, uh, these two objects, even though they're quite famous and are quite well known, are still full of mysteries. And one of those mysteries is what happens when two of them actually collide. Now, because of the size difference here, and because they are so massive, um, the collision is going to be quite extreme. But at the same time, they're also uh, stellar remnants. They're basically not really stars anymore, they're leftovers of stars. Both of these were very, very large stars before. This one was a larger star, this one was a smaller star. And uh, then they kind of lived off their life, and one of them turned into a neutron star, one of them became a white dwarf. This is what our sun will become as well. Now, these objects are extremely dense, and neutron star is uh, the denser of the two. And because of this, it's actually very likely going to start absorbing some of the layers from the white dwarf as it approaches it. Now, this is actually from a simulation and a study um, by a few scientists whose paper you can find in the description below that basically talks about what actually happens when these two objects collide. And according to them, well, it is a pretty fast event. And when this actually happens, uh, first of all, both of these objects get kind of stripped of their outer layer. And after that, um, once that happens, they start mixing together and the neutron star actually leaves its core on the inside but it gets surrounded by the leftovers from the white dwarf. So in other words, they combine into one a single object. It's a kind of a mixture between a white dwarf and a neutron star. But the interesting thing here is that um, they actually behave like neither and at the same time create a very large supernova. As a matter of fact, about 18% of mass gets completely thrown off into the abyss, as in like into the outside area. And this mass obviously creates a supernova, about which we'll talk in a few seconds. Now here, I think it's going to basically initiate right away. Uh, and the leftover neutron star white dwarf mixture, and I guess here we go, and the leftover mixture between the neutron star and the white dwarf um, is actually pretty hot and stays hot for a while, but eventually cools down and we actually think that it might even collapse into a black hole afterwards. So it might actually turn into a black hole. But th this is a supernova we're kind of interested in. So this is actually known as the calcium rich transient. You can probably guess why. It's because it's actually full of calcium. As a matter of fact, half of the mass released here is uh, or becomes calcium. We also think that this is how most of the calcium in the universe was produced. So you know that stuff in your bones? Yet another supernova, but probably a different one. Um, this is also known as the universe's loneliest supernova. And that's because for some unknown reason, and we still don't really understand why, a lot of these supernova occur really, really, really far away from everything. 
like literally outside of galaxies. So let's actually just accelerate this a little bit just so you can see how it expands. But, um, well, let's do something better. Let's go to a galaxy here. And let's initiate a supernova here. So this is why it's called a the Alone Way Supernova. These events often occur way, way away from the galaxies. So in this case, you'll see one appearing somewhere above this galaxy because I just... Oh, there it is. I just initiated it. Um, and they often occur in, in the most random locations. About a third of them has been at least 65,000 light years away from uh, the parent galaxy. Suggesting that these two objects, in other words, the white dwarf and the neutron star, collided um, outside of the galaxy. And they got thrown off uh, from the galaxy by something. And we think it was probably the supernova from um, one of those objects e erupting earlier on. So when the supernova occurs, it creates quite a large shock wave. And that shock wave probably threw off the binary system. And then the resulting stars basically end up uh, traveling out of the galaxy because they're moving way too fast and the galactic core cannot hold them anymore. So we think that this is why so many of these lonely supernova or the lonely supernova as they're known occur outside of the galaxies. And in pretty much every case, they seem to be a combination of a neutron star colliding with a white dwarf. Now, why exactly these uh, supernova don't seem to occur inside the galaxy and why most of them seem to be outside is yet another mystery and possibly a mystery that we'll solve sometime in the future. But for now, we think that basically, for some unknown reason, a, a white dwarf and a neutron star uh, get thrown off much easier than any other binary system. And we know that a lot of uh, stars and a lot of mass actually gets thrown off uh, from the galaxy when it, it, for example, collides with something else. Like, so if I mix these two galaxies together, for example, you'll notice that uh, as they're mixing, a lot of the stars will actually get flung out. And so many of them will end up orbiting the galaxy on the outskirts or even fly off completely. And so this is how a lot of those binary objects end up outside. But why exactly it's usually the calcium producing ones? So there, there you go. We just lost a, a big chunk of the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, so yeah, why, why these uh, objects end up being calcium producers is definitely a mystery. Well, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to show you a collision between a neutron star and a white dwarf, talk about the science behind it, and basically tell you what actually happens when they do collide and what kind of a supernova they produce. This also solves the mystery of where most of the calcium comes from in the world. Just like a few months ago, we solved the mystery of where most of the gold and platinum comes from. And that's of course from the collision of the two, two neutron stars. Anyway. So here's our Milkdromeda galaxy, a combination of Andromeda and Milky Way. And we're going to just watch it spin here because it's kind of relaxing, actually. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.